It's that time, time to find your joy in real estate business planning for 2024. Let's go, y'all. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome, everyone, to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, y'all. This is episode 262. You can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan and I were doing our podcast prep this morning. Usually we chat for a couple minutes. This turned into like a 20-minute wrap session. Yes, it was a bit of a counseling session. It's all good. And we're back and we're really ready to dive into that thing everyone loves to do. Yeah sometimes procrastinates about it, but this is the year you're not going to procrastinate and we're going to talk about business planning for real estate, but the simplified fun version, because you got to find your joy in business planning. We didn't even put business in it. It's just planning 24. That's right. Because it's not always just about business, right? We are all about line connecting and prospering. It's about work-life balance. It's about finding, it's about finding their joy, y'all. You got to find your joy. And I, we just a bit, but we're, we're really trying to just, you know, lighten this up and we are going to keep it simple because I think people feel business planning, goal setting is cumbersome yep. and it can be if you make it, but we're going to do the simplified version of it today. In the last uh, two episodes ago, ago, we talked about finishing the year strong yep. um, and we, we, you know, we talked about a few things that reference what's what we're going to talk about a little bit today but let's dive in a little bit and talk about it for those of you that do want the the nitty gritty but what's this first jim Rohn? you gotta love jim Rohn. what's this quote yeah just a just a quote that you never begin the day until it's finished on paper i love that because you gotta okay. plan your day right right on okay so in jim Rohn, there's always great nuggets from jim Rohn. So, but let's talk about if you do don't have a real estate business plan that'll let you crunch the numbers and create goals. We got you covered. We do right, have you Matt? covered. That's right. You can you tell all the fine listeners and anybody watching us on YouTube here how they can get our completely free, comprehensive business planning everything? Yeah, it really is uh, almost way too much that we're giving away for free. <laughs> but but we have for years, and uh, many, many, many people have uh, downloaded the course and have gone through and downloaded the downloads. And it's just, it really is all inclusive, right? It is our fundamentals, our agent fundamentals course in business planning. Uh, it's in our freebie section over on our website. So head, head over there to freebies. You can download that. It really technically is module one of our real estate sales builder course and uh, has all of the business planning documents you're going to need. You're going to be able to do your business budget, your personal budget. All of your business planning steps are in there on a spreadsheet that's easy to fill out. So we talk about, you know, doing the short, simplified version of the business plan. Even if you want to go full on into the whole business plan, it's still not that hard. You just need to take time. And really what you need to do is give it a little thought, right? So we have all of that in there. We have some, uh, some mindful uh, uh tips and hints for you in there too. So you can kind of keep your mind in a fresh place. We have our My Path uh, document that's just been added into to that mix as well. So once you have your plan built, you can do the daily. We talked about that before. We've talked about doing the daily for a long time. We talked about it on our finish year song. We're going to talk about doing the daily more again today, but there is a whole do the daily form in there. Um, just everything you need to do your business planning. So head on over to wbnlcoaching.com and download the agent ag, real estate agent fundamentals and business planning course. And um, it's going to um, uh, give you everything you need to get that done. If you are watching us on YouTube and you have your phone out right now, hold on a second. Here we go. We have a QR code right here. Just go ahead and scan this QR code. That's going to take you right to the checkout page for the course. You can download that course as we're talking and start downloading your documents and, and looking at what you have involved there. So all there, wbnlcoaching.com, go to freebies. So we're going to summarize in our podcast today, kind of the steps and just know that all those documents plus us on video, walking you through how That's to complete right. them, how to do it is all part of that course. But we want to go high level today and get you really focused and excited about 
getting your plan together for 2024 and actually starting to work that plan right now so you can right. have that first quarter, which is what we talked about in finishing the year strong. So it always starts with conducting uh, a year-to-day business review. So whenever you're listening to this, we are recording this in October, uh, third week of October, uh, even if it's November or even later, you just start now and there's literally a form in the business plan downloads that will have you gather, uh, it's allowed, it lets you collect the data so that right. you can find out the numbers. You need to figure out your numbers. So crazy to me, Matt, how many people don't know, I'll say, hey, how many closings have you had this year? And they're like, uh, you should know your numbers, yep. you know? Yep. So you, you, and then you wanna break it down into, in this form, I'll help you with that. What's your average sales price? What, what number of listings versus buy side sales did you have? Where did your business come from? That is all step one, and we have a form that'll help you with that. Uh, the other part of looking at the review is a little bit of what we talked about in the Finishing the Year Strong episode, but just to reiterate, this is where you want to look at not just the sheer numbers, but what were your other goals for the year, and did yeah. you accomplish them? Did you have goals to put systems in place? Did you have goals to work on new avenues, new sources of business? Do, do a review and a return on investment analysis. Are you spending money on leads, for example? How did that work out for you? And crunch the numbers. You know, I was talking to a client and it's like spending $500 or maybe if she was $1,000 a month on on Zillow leads. And so I said, great, so what's the, what's the return on investment? And so we had to walk through that process to go, okay, so you spent 12 grand. How many deals did you do? Three. Awesome. What's your what's your average commission that you earn? What's the total commission earned on all three of those? And then there and now analyze that. Did right. you and you know you don't do and by the way when you do something like that you don't want to break even. You don't go spend six thousand dollars a year on farming to break even and get one deal. Well, I broke even. Okay, yeah, you got a write off for six thousand dollars, but you really didn't get a good return on your investment. So that's all part of the conducting the review. So you can analyze where are you going to go for the next year. What are you going to keep doing? That's part of what we talk about too. Is there any, are, are there uh, activities that are working for you? Are you gonna continue them? Is there a budget that goes with that? So you can continue. Are there things that you haven't, that you've been saying you wanna start and you haven't done around prospecting or lead gen or a new source of business? And then are there things that as you go through this analysis that you need to stop doing? So maybe you've been wasting, maybe your, your analysis of where you're spending some money, you realize it's not working. Now, sometimes it's not working because you're not doing a part of what is required when That's you, right. for example, spend money on leads and get leads, but then don't have a solid follow-up plan. So maybe the analysis is, are you willing to do the follow-up plan so that you can get a return on your investment? Or if you're not going to do that, then don't waste the money. You see? So that's all part of that. Now you're going to set your new goals and outcomes for the new year. And those goals can be everything, all areas of your life, which our workbook really walks you through. I really recommend that you have a balanced set of goals, not just financial and business goals, but you have personal goals. Uh, you have goals about your development, uh, family and relationship and, and so forth, right? Maybe there's goals for yourself that you want to work on. Uh, and then why do you need to write those goals written down? That's why we, we I believe that you should write them as affirmations and put them in front of you and do that type of thing and maybe say them on a daily basis. It's just the power of uh, in, you know, saying it out loud and having your subconscious mind really go to work on what your intentions are. And there's a yep. whole bunch more in our course on why written goals and how they need to be for you, goals that you really have a desire to achieve so that you've got a why behind it, right? And then you're going to complete the business plan, the actual business plan. And you can use the tools that we have, which will let a very simple one page in there is to say, I want to make this much money. You put your variables in there. What percent listing versus sale? What's your average sales price? What's your commission in your area? And what's your split at your company? Any fees? And that'll break it all down for you and tell you if you want to make $150,000, here's how many uh, closings you have to have. So you can have that. But the part that that part's easy to do. You can yeah, sit down yeah. and go, I want to make $122,000 next year. And then using the variables for you, you, you can break that down to how many transactions that means. Now the key, and this is what we're going to spend most of our time on today, is you have to take action. You have oh. to develop an action plan 
for each of these areas that you're going to work. And then you want to track and measure your results. And there's a lot of, we have so many tools for you to do that. One of the key ones we do is we just track our escrows. We track yeah. our pending escrows. We, we track, uh, you know, where the business is coming from and we then know where we continue to put our efforts and resources into so that we can get more of that business and we fine tune it as we go. So there are a lot of things to help that. And we have everything from there to Matt mentioned my path where you can do quarterly check-ins and, and, you know, your business plan's a living, breathing document. The goal is of course, to not like do it and then put it away in a drawer is to have it out and look at it all the time, you know? And yeah. If you really, if you look at a lot of these, these uh, forms and, and uh, spreadsheets as things that are really going to help you understand where you're spending your money. And I mean, it's made, there's, there's that business budget and that personal budget spreadsheet, you know, uh, those just alone are huge because I guarantee you, you do not know where you're spending your money and you don't know how much money you're spending. Right. Yep. You know what your bank account is at the end of the month. I'm sure you have a feeling for that, but yep. you don't have an idea. And there's so, so many different ways that you can, you know, be more efficient with your spend all the way around personally and in your business. Absolutely. And we we walk you through in great detail in our free course. Remember, just go get that. If you've not really ever done a business plan or maybe you have and you want to have a fresh approach to it go get it. It's free. You can use it. You can use the parts that you want. You can keep it simple or you can get really down into the nitty gritty. And there's things in there that are going to help you with your gathering the information that you're going to need to do your uh, taxes and your, you know, yeah. to work with your accountant, and your CPA or whoever helps you with that. All right. Absolutely. So that's the basic steps for business planning. <clears throat> now we, we came, uh, Matt actually came up with these three things. Now, Matt, I'm going to, Matt, basically I got Matt. Go I don't think I did it. I just mentioned some things, but he decided to start playing a little bit with AI. Can you tell the story of how we got these three things then? Yeah, it's three really, you know, AI things. has been a, I, ha I have such mixed emotions about the whole thing, but here's the deal. You know, you don't get on board. <laughs> You're going to be run over or left behind, left right? Behind, right? Yeah, you really will. So you have to understand what it can do. And I went in <clears> into, um, this was actually built in our Kajabi program. And I went in and, and just started typing, you know, AI, if you don't know much about it, you know, it, it really is kind of creepy because it starts to understand you, right? Understands how you speak and how, you know, you, how, where your mind, you know, kind of works and what you're looking for. And if you, you know, it's like anything else, you, you give the information that you are, you know, give it as much information as you can. It's going to spit out some stuff that's actually pretty darn amazing. So I had these general ideas in mind. So I'm typing, you know, the different, um, like, give me, I think I said, give me three or four bullet points on this. And I, you know, and I put our course in there. I put a couple other details and it just started spitting some stuff out. And it, it I mean, it, right away, it started spitting out the words clarity and focus and is amazing. Um, how that, that works. I think it said take action. And we yeah, absolutely. And we take, yeah, it was take action. <clears throat> it's like, okay, <laughs> here we are. So, there, you know, and then the beauty of AI, and this is a way, you know, I, I yeah. hope that most people will use it, right? Is that you take that information and don't use it as is, because, you know, it's just pulling stuff from all over the world and all over the net, right? But then start use, making it your own. Use it, put your own voice in there, and it's really powerful. So I can't say, you know, in the front end of using AI, you're going to spend more time than you would probably not using it because you are teaching it, and it is teaching you, and you are augmenting, but it really is an interesting tool, especially if you're a little bit stuck on what to do and where to start. So Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, this is part of – We'll be talking more about that in upcoming episodes because in some workshops we're doing on, you know, getting yourself ready for the new year, we're going to talk a little bit about how do you yep. integrate AI into what you're doing. And there's no getting around it because Matt no. just brought up, like, if you're a Canva user, there's an AI element inside of that. I use MailChimp. There's an AI element inside of MailChimp now. So it is everywhere. And you'll definitely want to get on board with understanding it or, or take a course or under, get, get on board with the integrated into the third party softwares that are out there or mm -hmm. go look at chat GPT, GPT right. the open source and start learning and playing with it. But this is what we that's a great segue into, uh, you know, one of the tools that you got to get up to speed with in the yeah. new year or it'll leave sure. you behind. Right. But what we wanted to do to simplify things, you know, we just walk through business planning, like the mechanics of business planning. But when you break it down into three objectives, really, for, for getting yourself, you know, not just ready for the new year, but to stay on track. And 
The first one is get clarity. And what we mean by getting clear, clear about your goals. Okay. Cl that's it. You know, in whatever your business is about, what's the mission or the vision for your business? Where are you now and where do you want to go? Okay. Yep. Then you're going to define that path. That's what, that's what that's all about. So that part we just talked about in, in our course is going to help you. You might need the tools. Maybe you need a little tools or a little help, a little coaching on how to get clear. Okay, so that's the first part. When you have a clarity about what what do I want to accomplish, where do I want to be, and I don't doesn't matter what the end game is. It, if you are, if what motivates you is dollars, then focus on dollars. If what motivates you is the number of transactions that you're going to do, the number of people you're going to help buy or sell homes, right. frame it in such a way that it's it's means something to you, and be clear about the direction that your business is, and, and get specific about what it is. That's number one. Get clarity because we can't go do the rest unless you have. If you're not clear, then you'll be all over the place. Yeah. Okay. So, cause number two is narrow your focus. And when you have clarity around your goals, objectives, outcomes, whatever you want to call it, your, your mission. Now I'm going to suggest that a lot of people do too many things. And in our business, we have a tendency to throw a bunch of stuff out there and see what works and it doesn't work because you're not focused on, you don't have a focus in, in a very set, which is number three taking action, which we're going to talk about doing the daily. But when you narrow your focus, I bet I say this all the time in all of our years that we've been coaching, I've always said the power of three, you have your database, your sphere of influence, past clients, I'm going to loop that all into one, we all have that as a source of business, but it's right. not enough. So there are one to two other things that you're going to focus all your activity on is what I mean by narrowing your focus. Now, You've got to do something beyond your sphere and past clients that you are super passionate about and you're good at it and you get up every day and you want to do it. We're going to we're going to talk a lot about that here next. OK, so that's the key. Narrow your focus. Then now we're clear. We have some clarity. We've narrowed our focus and we're, we've got pools of business ideas of business generation pools, whatever you want to call them, pillars, um, target markets, whatever the word is that you're going to put all your energy and tension and focus on and specific activities so you can generate the number of transactions you want to do based on your goals for the year, right? Makes sense? And so do the daily is our term to work the plan. You're going to create your plan and then it, the way that you execute it is this thing called do the daily and it's five areas, five things. And, you know, I have had this written in front of me and there's been on episodes where I've pulled this little it's right here in front of me but matt designed a better version of it and oh. we and honestly we're gonna put this as a postcard uh, a thing that you could actually get in our shop if you want it there are a couple versions of it that if you need a little something to motivate you uh there's another version of it and we we you can matt let's put it in the shop okay can yeah we do well, it? yeah absolutely um i don't stickers, know what we can put stickers, in the shop stickers and posters Stickers and little poster postcards. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So the, the daily, do the daily is this starts and this is the order of it. In my opinion, the order, the priority, they all, all five of these, these areas, these, these action items need, need to be your focus on a daily basis, at least five days a week. The first one is morning routine. Morning routine is for you. You can't be all that for everybody else in your life from your family and your relationships to your clients and your peers if you don't take care of yourself first. And it's probably a, a one a lot of people, myself included, is the one I have to really work on the most. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm very uh, haphazard with this one. But your morning routine can be what you think it is. So it just means getting up in the first thing in the morning for yourself. And I recommend the morning because you got the rest of the day. It's it's getting up and not rolling out of bed and, and checking your phone and jumping in and, and getting into the tasks that you need to do, which is what I have a bad habit of doing. It's getting up, even if you have to get up a little bit earlier, and do something for you. It could be for your mindset. It yeah. could be for you physically or both. Mindset could be meditation, doing some yoga, taking a walk. It could be just reading a book, whatever. It's literally so, whatever you can do to get your head in the game. 
It is. And for and for most of us, it's a combination of those things, but it right. generally involves some kind of physical activity, which will help you feel better. And, and then, then it's getting yourself ready for the day, eating, eating a healthy breakfast or doing whatever you need to do that way. And then getting yourself ready, get up and get dressed, right? Get up and what's that old adage that real estate brokers say, get up, suit up, you know, something yeah. like that. I'm not gonna be wearing a suit here in Vegas. Nobody's wearing a suit some brokers. But anyway, that's your morning routine. That That is priority one. Then priority two is one to two hours of lead generation, period, end of story. We're going to spend mm -hmm. some more time on that in a minute because uh, Matt's going to throw me, put me on the spot and, and I'm going to walk you through what does lead generation look like along with uh, lead follow-up. Um, so lead generation, then I think it's active clients. Okay. So I mean, they all... Morning routine is just, I did it first because it starts the day. Lead generation one to two hours doesn't have to be the next thing that you do, but it's the most important thing that you've got to fit into your day, okay? Active clients simply means who do you have right now that you're working with that you might need to set appointments for or get ready for or prepare for active clients today or this week. Lead follow-up, critically important because you can generate leads but if you fail at the lead follow-up part, then what's the point already? Exactly. And then the fifth area is where many, many of us can easily spend our day skipping the other. And you don't skip your active clients, but you could skip lead gen and lead follow-up because your day is filled with escrow, pending status, following up on things you have to do, put deals to bed to close, and then admin stuff. Admin stuff, a million admin things, taking a class, doing this, renewing your license, going to a meeting, attending a training, um, you know, doing all the endless work if you don't have somebody, you know, and hopefully the goal would be that you can uh, delegate some of these escrow and admin things by hiring a transaction coordinator and assistant. And in the beginning, maybe you can't do that. So you have to do all that. And that fills the day. And that's the thing I want to caution you against. You don't go morning routine, let me do all the admin stuff because it's easy. But that is what most agents do, in my opinion, that are not happy with their business. I'm going to say most real estate professionals that are not happy with their business go morning, don't even maybe do morning routine yeah. and just stay in the escrow and admin area, getting ready to get ready, as I say, you know, mm -hmm. and hoping business comes to them. The, the 10 or 15% that kill it in this business I'll guarantee you most of them are doing a morning routine and 100% they are they are A plus on lead gen and lead follow up. The active clients, when you have a client, that's the easiest part. You're like, whatever, I'm ready for it. But that's your right. whole day could be getting ready for an active client and then you forget to do the other things is my point, okay? So that's do the daily and it's like you get up every day. That's why we created it on a postcard or a sticker and I've had it on a yellow sticky note because I'm like, have I done all these things today? Have I done? And I know what my lead generation is on mine. It says morning routine, two to three TikTok uh, videos because that's content creation. Then we have an, a, add a virtual assistant who puts it on the other channels, but I have to go do that and upload them. That's how we generate our leads. And then it's uh, our clients and our lead follow-up and our escrows and, and getting back into – and the lead follow-up is where uh, – you, you, you can even follow, call it just following up with everybody, including people in your database, but leads that you have, or for us, it's doing, you know, various things. So, so let's dive in a little bit more about what we mean by how do you put a plan together for a area that's going to be your pillar for business? Is that what's next, Matt? Yeah. And let me just say, you know, I've said this before, and I, I think it's, it's worth saying again, you know, Jan and I talk practically every day, of the, of the, every day, period. <laughs> um, and Jan's been hyper focused on this morning routine for and doing the daily for a long time now, but certainly all of this year. And and she talks about it all the time. And she does write this down and she does go through the steps and she does do all that. And they have they are on track and they have exceeded their goals practically all year long. I mean, think about Jan, your 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 entire career of real estate. Have you ever been as on point with your business? than you are right now. And I would, I would dare say the answer is no, right? No, it, well, I haven't. And I think it's because of, 
everything we talk about now, which is simplifying it, getting it down to the thing that you're good at and the right. thing that you know generates business and doing it every day along with the follow-up. And So the, the fact of the matter is, it's not that Jan didn't works. know how to do, Jan, it's not like she just learned how to do real estate after all these years, right? No, it's like actually putting the words and the techniques into action. It is about action, right? So it's been amazing to watch. And I, like I said, I've said this many times before, but I mean, it, it, this clearly is how you do it, people. So, you know, pay attention to this and, and uh, you have to adopt this as a, I don't know, like we started the show with a little bit of joy, right? Because when you do, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna be successful. So, I mean, there's exactly. a, lot, a lot to it. And, and, you know, and so now what we we're gonna do differently on this podcast, cause we have talked about do the daily and focus on it. Now I wanna give you specifics, okay? Right. So Matt, I, I'm going to be, Matt's gonna put me on the spot. And he's going to tell me a, a an area or a niche. And I'm just going to tell you what I, if I was coaching you, what I would tell you would be the things that you need to go do. Right. And we came up with this idea because Jan's been talking to quite a few clients over the last few weeks that she's really been trying to hone back into, you know, kind of round them back up, you know, and really make them do a little bit more of a, you know, examination of what is going on. Let's talk about lead generation first, or not lead generation, buying leads. So let's talk about Zillow leads. And you know what's really interesting, Janet? I was thinking about this last night after we were chatting about the show uh, kind of knows today. You know, we have interviewed all by 16 or 17 thought leaders in our Ask Fives uh, this year. And it is fascinating to me that, you know, five, 10 years ago, you know, it was all, of, all people were talking about were online leads, online leads, online leads like Zillow and, you know, we're, you know, going out and buying things, buying leads. I don't think any of these people have talked about online leads. I mean, that, you no. know, at all. It's just interesting how it has shifted around. Now, obviously, people are still doing that. And this came up in one of your conversations just recently. So to, to walk me through, if you're going to get in there and you're actually going to buy right. leads. what's And this point? can be any leads. So we're yeah, saying Zillow, Zillow, but it could, it's so funny. You should say this because I just literally yesterday, put a uh, got a text from a realtor.com rep saying call me so right. I can talk to you about spending money with us to generate business. Uh-huh. Now here's the deal. L paid leads 100% are going to work for you if you do these things. So first of all set your budget and if you've done it before you've got to do what I talked about a little earlier in the show, do your return on investment analysis and see is it generating. It's go you're going to get leads if you do you know you'll get leads. But this is what I want to say to you. There are five to eight percent of the leads that you get are going to turn into something. So if you get a hundred leads, you're killing it. If you get, you're doing great. If you can get four or five deals out of that over time, you're killing it. If you can get eight out of a hundred, so that you have to accept those numbers and know that you're spending the money. But if you work it, and this is what I'm going to tell you, so I don't care what your budget is, and you're generating those leads. This is the key because this is passive. You put money yep. into a bucket. And whatever that bucket machine does generates leads to you. And if it doesn't generate leads, then you got to get out of that bucket and go someplace else. So these companies will get you a person to talk to. Only a very small percentage of them are really going to buy a house. That's just the way it is. It's a numbers game. Some people just like to look at houses. So now you get your lead and here is the key. This is what you have to do for the daily. It's, you're not This goes in completely into your lead, gen, your lead follow-up activity in the daily because the leads are coming to you. You're not doing anything but spend money to buy them. That makes sense. So that's the passive way. But the what makes it active is every day you are working those leads. Okay. So your day has to be when you're doing lead follow up and you're doing Zillow, you have to decide first, are you going to follow up inside the Zillow app and use their tools? Are you going to route those leads into your CRM and use that? You have to decide that. And if you don't make a decision on that, then you're getting caught up in the whole, like, I don't know which way to go. It's overwhelming. It's not overwhelming. Freaking decide you have a database of hundreds. And I mean, some of my clients have thousands of leads and honestly, they're not following up with them. So the key for act, and we have this in our real estate sales builder program. We have a whole module on online lead generation, how to do it, and then how to follow up. This kind of Cold lead requires six to eight connections before you get anybody to even talk to you. Yeah. So we have, you have to develop a plan where you, it depends if they're giving you a phone number, you have to try in the first 10 days to two weeks, five or six connections. Call right away. Speed the lead is everything with paid leads. 
give you a quick story. This wasn't a paid lead, but we had a person reach out to us that we just closed, met them a month ago. Cosmo, um, they called Cosmo uh, or texted Cosmo from a TikTok. He replied, I mean, he called right away, started showing houses and they just closed. Now, when we met with them after, to go through their contract and what they purchased a new home, we asked them to tell the story of how did they find us. They tell us about connecting with another TikToker here in the area who did not call them until they were already under contract with us. Mm. So Amazing. that happens all the time. And that was somebody reached out to us. It was easier. Here it's harder. When you pay for the leads, they don't know you yet. So you have to be willing every day and you can't just call that lead once. You need to call, you need to text, you need to use video text, and then you have to have a campaign inside of your CRM where you're gonna do that. There's so many uh, touches in the first 10 days, then for 30 days, and you keep doing it until they say, stop calling me or talking to me. That is in a nutshell, what you have to do with paid leads. And yeah. the, the nitty gritty of what to say and all that, we have it in our, I think it's uh, module nine online lead generation. We have all that. We have the text. We have the things that you can take and adapt and do that. But that's the work if you've never done it. Zillow has some great stuff to use too if you're doing Zillow. Realtor.com has stuff. But if you don't get up every day, five days a week, and in that wheel of do the daily, this is what you're doing, then you might as well stop wasting your money. That's how you make lead generation online work. You follow yeah. up the leads a lot. So your action in that particular prospecting method is the follow-up, right? Constantly every day though. It has to be exactly. every day and That's you right. have a game plan and it tells you who to follow up with if you're using your CRM. All right, let's move on to the next one. So yeah, it's so, okay. so we can lead follow up. So clearly that that's costing me money, but I'm an agent now who doesn't want to spend that money, right? So let's talk about open houses. How can you okay. effectively make open houses work by doing the daily? I mean, you're going to love it. Do an open house every day. Huh, what do you know? An open house every day. I will guarantee you. And you're going to say, well, Jan, there's not any listings and you're not working hard enough because there's listings and you could go reach out to people and you could find a couple agents if you in your company or outside of your company, they'd be happy to have you hold an open house. You could find some vacant listings. You know, there's all types of properties that you can do. But here's the deal. If you got up every day, five days a week, and if you had no business and you got up every day and you did, we have module four. I think is effective open houses in our sales builder program. It's all these ideas, okay, of how to hold a grand open house, how to, you can do things like invite the neighbors, but you can just have your tools of the trade, your open house signs, and you don't even have to necessarily advertise it and go do this for two to three hours a day in a location that's going to get traffic because of your signs. Come to this place that's going to be your office for the day. And if you did that consistently, and you know what, I'm even going to say, three days a week yeah you could for you could, four you could. weeks that's that's fifth three times four is 12, 12 open houses if you did 12 open houses on a monthly basis i think if you did them every day uh you know then you would get obviously more but let's just say you did 12 open houses a month i guarantee you you will meet several buyers i think you'll have a better return on your investment which is your time it's just your time and your energy and the thing that you do in the mindset of an open house is you go there and you're going to be there for three hours. And if no one comes to your open house, this is when you're going to work on other lead follow-up you need to do, right. writing personal notes, doing some homework and admin that you can do. It, you, know, you should be able to get online anywhere. You should be able to, if you're not out there in the field and can't connect through your phone as a hotspot or get a hotspot, you need to be able to be online and do what you need to do. You could be doing three hours of work that you would go do at your house but you're, no one's knocking on your door to go, hi, Jen, I know you're a real estate agent. Um, would you go sell me a house? Yeah. Help me buy a house. Um, you know, no. But if you're out there and you're open for business, you're going to meet people and talk to them and so on. That's all you got to do. There's other things that you can do to make more people show up and spend some money and do some ads and all that. We have that in our module on open houses. But you don't have to spend any money except for your signs. And do a little homework, know the neighborhood, be able to talk about it. That's all you would have to do. But the key is you've got to do it daily, daily. Yeah. You know? And I'm and I'm saying, and you know what the reality is, Matt? People that do open houses, they most people don't like them because they don't have an attitude around that they're going to work. The people that do love them, and this is the point I'm making. 
You have to love it. You have to go, I'm, I kill it at open houses. This is the easiest way for me to get business. And if nobody comes, I'm going to get all this other work done. But people are a little bit lazy. Everybody wants the business to come to them and the business is not coming to you. It is when you buy those Zillow leads, but then it does magically turn into business exactly. unless you lead follow up. Now you do this open house 12 to 15 a month. You will have a database of people who are ready now to get qualified. I guarantee you'll be talking to two to five people if you had 12 open houses that are going to be future clients. This is how easy this could be. Right. And we've Literally. talked about this before, too. So, you know, don't let anybody people will tell you that open houses don't work and that you know, you're placating the sellers by doing them or whatever, whatever negative thing you hear about them. But they absolutely do work. And I I have I said this last week, last time when we talked about this, and I, I will stand by this. There is no way you're not going to pick up sellers at an open house as well if they see you True in that. the neighborhood all the time. There's just no way that's not going to happen. Um, beyond our real estate sales builder course um, uh, module on open houses, we do have a open house checklist in our freebie section. So don't forget to check that out as well. So it gives you the whole list of things that you need to do to have an effective open house. So check that out. over Wait, our part, And listen, part two. It's not just holding the open house. We're back to that's the that's the in the daily, do the daily. That's the lead generation activity that you're doing. Open houses, effective open houses. Right. The other part of that is following up with the leads hmm. that you get. They're not ready now. They need to get into your follow up plan in your CRM. They get your newsletter, all of that, and then you talk to them when they're ready to buy. Not everybody's ready to buy. Lots of people are out looking months and months and months ahead of time for buying. 100% online, you're going to get so many people who aren't ready now. But if you nurture them and stay in touch with them and show value, they will work with you later. Half of the people we meet aren't ready now. And we, we're we working with some people this year that we met last year. Okay, so but it's because we stayed in touch with them. So same thing, you see in the theme here, you must work on it daily. And you have to do something daily. And then you have to do lead follow up daily. So that's open houses. That's Absolutely. the easiest there's Cheap a lot of other, yeah, a lot of other uh, of things we can go into. We're not going to go into all of them. We'll go into one more. But before we get to that one more, so just like Dan, Jan was saying, if you're doing for sale by owners, if you're you know you're 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 trying to incorporate client appreciation into your your uh, lead generation, if you're you're looking at a certain niche to go after, no matter what your lead generation um, you know uh, area is. <laughs> you need to actually have action around it, right? And not just the action, it's that lead follow-up that's super important. You talked about, and I know a lot of people are curious about this, and Jan has been really successful with this with Cosmo this year. Well, actually not just this year, ongoing, um, with, uh, you know, getting, you know, being, I, I don't like the word influencer, but becoming more of an influencer and getting your leads by, you know, posting, um, you know, video. Uh, so let's talk a little about content creation, Jan, okay. and how you can do that. So content creation needs to be video and you pick your platform, YouTube, Instagram Reels, Facebook, TikTok. We've had success on TikTok because the algorithm works differently. It's very much like YouTube's, but better, in my opinion, as far as uh, getting an audience quicker. But this is the complete and only way you're going to get business and it you must put content up on a daily basis. Ah. And when you first get started, two to three to even four TikToks videos have to go up. So I'll just talk about our TikTok success. It literally starts with that. And the content has to be follow all the rules that you would do, e SEO rules like you would do on YouTube. It's quality content that people that are that your audience wants to hear and we can there's all kinds of other we can do a whole nother show on just how do you discover what that is some of it's trial and error but yeah. it's everything from using the search engine terms because tiktok is a little mini search engine just like youtube with hashtags and descriptions and talking about your area all that helps the algorithm you help the algorithm whichever platform you're on tell what kind of person wants to watch this video and you provide the content and then they serve it up to the people that you're trying to target. And there's ways that you have to do that, but that part you can learn the part that you can't, that, that doesn't happen automatically is you've got to get out there and do it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it daily, you don't build an audience. And I think back to when Instagram was a thing years ago and it was the very, and I, I've always been into social media and blogging and into the tech stuff. And honestly, this thing I'm talking about right now, doing it daily video wasn't Instagram was pictures, photos. Yeah. 
Right. And it's and it's still mostly that, but they've got reels and they're trying to compete with YouTube and, and TikTok and there's reels now and everybody, all the platforms want video. And you got to get over it. So first of all, this is not for you if you don't like doing video. So pass. Yeah. Don't say I'm going to go do YouTube videos and then you're not willing to do what I'm talking about here. Just take it out of your thing and go focus on something that you're good because, at and, and, you and, like. and just stop for a second because you can be just as successful make just as much money if you're focusing on something else because it's about narrowing your focus right okay 100 percent. but you must do it daily and then right. it, you must also daily here's the theme you have to create content daily and then it's a little different in the follow-up you've got to uh com uh, answer people's comments uh people will direct message you you've got to reply to that You'll generate people what over time we generate people calling us at least one to three a week. People will call us mm -hmm. and ask us to help them. They we have a you have to stay in, you know, you have to answer those calls quickly. I gave you the story of how somebody else lost out because it took them three days to return the this was somebody saying, I want to buy a house. I'm in town. Yeah. I want to buy a house. And the agent didn't follow up fast enough. So it's just like Zillow leads or anything. It's very quick to follow up and then nurture and we do Zooms and then we might meet them and then they're not ready to buy. There's a whole process of the follow up. There's a, it's the same process for any kind of follow up where that, whether that lead came from Zillow, an open house expired that's not ready to list now, a networking event, a farming, whatever you do, the follow up, the, 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 I mean, a hundred percent, the riches are in the follow-up. Okay. You know, that's where the money, the fortune is in the follow-up is the, uh, is the phrase, the alliteration, the fortune is in the follow-up and I couldn't agree more. So what's different about our content creation, because I've tried all the other things. This is a different lead. It's a warm lead. When the person reaches out to us or we start developing a relationship in the text messages or the direct messages, um, the person's like, I already chose you because I've been, I mean, literally this is what we get. We've been following your content for six months. The other day, somebody said a year, we've been following you for a year and we weren't ready to buy. Now we are. They never reached out to us. They never commented. They never did anything until they were ready. That doesn't happen at paid leads or even at open houses, face to face at open houses. I think if you're good, you have a better chance of building some instant rapport, but they don't know you yet and they don't trust you. When you do quality content and you do it consistently on a daily basis and you do the follow up, the people feel like they already know you. You attract the people that you want to attract because it's the content that you're putting out. So it's a difference. Now, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever really had to do, but I've enjoyed it because I like Matt knows I like doing the video. Yeah. I mean, we do this. It's work though. And there's days where we we get off, you know, we get off track and we realize we haven't posted like we're supposed to. There's two of us. We should at least put one a piece up. And there's days where I might skip that because everything else is busy. And then I have to, but there's, you know, the reality is when we do that, guess what happens? Yep. The lead volume falls off. Every time. So when we stay on track with it and consistently post, uh, we consistently get leads. So there it is. And That's we're building awesome. a pipeline. When you hold open houses, you're building a pipeline. When you do online leads, you're building a pipeline for the future. And you occasionally get people that want to buy right now. Um, and if you don't nurture that pipeline, then you're just wasting your time and effort and money. And that is what it takes to do this business is you got to do something to generate business one or two things to generate business, your sphere, and like for us, it's content creation, and you must have a solid follow-up plan. Just like you have to have a follow-up plan with your database. That's it. If you can figure that part out, then you're going to have as much business as you want to have. That's it, Matt. Wow. That's, and hey, if you need some video uh, content, video content creation ideas, we also have a document for that because we have a document for everything. Uh, yeah. We have 150 um, video content ideas up on the freebie site too. So no, no charge. Go, go check it out and get some ideas on how to actually create some uh, video as well. Well, good stuff, Jan O'Brien. I, you know, it really is not that hard, right? It's about just doing it. You know, it's like what we say a lot of times. I'll say it. The answer is simple. It's. Not, I'm not saying it's easy, because you got to have the discipline to get up and do the daily. All right. And, and, and you may d be good at parts of it. I mean, we're all good at the admin and the escrow part because, you know, that's that's easy. That's, easy. That's, that's the easy part. Yeah. I mean, there might be headaches in there, 
but dealing with that makes some people feel like, wow, I spent, I spent all day this today working on real estate, but you did not one dang thing to get a lead or to follow up with anybody. That's a recipe for disaster. So I get that now I have been saying it and teaching it for all these years, but now I'm living it. And I realize that I'm not perfect every day. That's why I have the daily in front of me. And that's why you should go get our new do the daily stickers or cards and, and live by that and look at that every day and go, how did, how did the end of the day comes and go, did I do my daily? And if you didn't do the daily, awesome. Okay. What are you going to do tomorrow to get back on track? And that's maybe the best way to approach that. Yeah. And speaking about being on track, this is a Will Rogers quote that actually is, is so apropos, Perfect. right? Even Perfect. if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. So you might know how to do something, right? And we, we all know how to do this business. We do, because we've been in it, right? So, you know, but you have to actually create. You need to do it, you need to have action. action, right? And then you need to do that follow-up, which clearly is super important. All right, everyone, well. find your joy in find your business. Find your joy. Plan. This and you year. can find a lot. If you want to really find some of that joy, go over to our website. Once again, I'm going to talk about our agent fundamentals course. It's located over there in our freebies tab. It's got all the information you're going to need and probably more information than you'll ever need to get that business plan done. And not just the business plan, like Jan was saying, and, you know, really walks through the whole process of how you actually start out by um, collecting and, and reviewing your, your stats for the year, how you actually set your goals and achievable outcomes, you know, all of it, your, your budgets, your plan, how you, uh, you know, create your action plan for going forward, how you track and monitor, how you give yourself some applause, you know, when you actually succeed. Uh, quarterly updates on your plan as well. I mean, it just goes on and on and on because as Jan mentioned earlier, a business plan is very fluid. So you need to stay up on top of that all the time. If you are watching online, um, here's a QR code, just easy peasy, you know, take a picture of that, get over to our site and um, um, download all that great stuff. So what else, Jan O'Brien? Oh, next week, we're back to our Ask Five. We have Lori Namazi, friend of the show. She's been on a couple times with us. I think the last show she was on was at our 200th episode. So it's been, you know, 60 some odd episodes since she's been on. But Lori, Lori is uh, very active with the uh, California Association with Realtors. She just does a lot with NAR and uh, Women's Council. She's got great insight, spending a lot of time up in Sacramento right now. She's, she's going to have a lot of good information to bring us next week uh, to the show. We so should talk to her. let's talk to her about the, the settlements and these lawsuits and the impact because California uh, realtors, I'm sure, has taken the lead in a lot of how yeah. to handle it. She's going to have some good stuff for us next week. So good. join us for that. What awesome. else, Dan O'Brien? Are you enjoying the, you enjoying your autumn so far? You know, we're, we're only yes. to our autumnal it's been beautiful, year. beautiful weather here. Beautiful weather. Weather to get up and get out and enjoy. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. I have a, I'm usually very good about doing my morning routine. Um, I've been feeling a little under the weather this week, so I've had four days of not doing my walking, and it, I can what? feel I can feel it. Uh, but this morning, when we get off this podcast, I'm going out and hitting the pavement and doing for a little walk. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting out and doing that. So it's gonna be excellent. Awesome. All right, everybody, do the same. Yep. Get up, get out, find your joy, and be forever wandering but not lost. Nice. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Let's go, y'all. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. We're taking the Com channel. Hold, Brian. please. Hold, please. Holding. Hold. I need to get something to carry on that conversation right there. Hold on. Sharing, finding our joy. It's going to be reversed, but. Ready? Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> that's very good. Let's go. Let's go. All right. I'm going to start that over. Go ahead. Uh, Bring it in.